James, where's that support, yo? 115, alright. Alright guys, so this is going to be uploaded to YouTube, and what it, this is going to be is a solo tutorial on how to get set up on Shadows of Evil. Um, getting your game set up to get the Wonder Weapon and also the Pack-a-Punch, which are two very complicated steps that hopefully this will make it a little bit more straightforward for you. Um, I'm going to use this cutscene just to buy me a little time to explain some things, but pretty much what needs to happen is you need to do four rituals to uh, unlock the Pack-a-Punch machine. Uh, these rituals are steps that have to be done throughout the game and pieces that you need to find, so I'll go over where those pieces are at and how to get to them, you know, the most efficient way that I have, uh, that I have came up, come up with. So hopefully this will be a more systematic way to go about uh, setting up on this map for solo. Alright, so let's get started. As soon as you spawn in, you have the option to shoot this ghost character that you see in your screen. Okay, that ghost character, if you shoot like a clip in half, you'll, it'll take you straight to round 5. If you empty your gun into him, it'll take you to round 10. And if you kill him, which I, you can buy that gun and kill him with, but it'll skip to round 15. So you have the option to do that. You know, don't don't mark my words. It, headshots do more damage, and it's not exactly a clip and a half. But by doing that, you will skip to round 15, round 10, round 5, whatever you whatever your fancy is. <clears throat> but the reason I don't recommend doing that is because it would be late the game before you actually get set up. You only get three of the beast mode abilities or afterlife abilities that we know from Mob of the Dead. I'm going to call them afterlife abilities uh, just because it, I, I feel weird saying that uh, beast mode uh, thing. Uh, but you only get three afterlife and it works the same on Mob of the Dead. What happens is you get one refill of the afterlife ability after you finish each round. So if you skipped around 15 and you try setting up, you know, getting the pack a punch and the wonder weapon uh, it, it becomes a lot more difficult to stay alive because you, you have to finish the round and you want to save one zombie at the end of the round, which you will see the reason for that and what I'm going to do. Um, because you're trapped into these rooms. You're trapped into these rooms that you have to do the rituals with and you have six witches that spawn with you. Uh, so it's not easy to do these rituals mid-round, so you're going to want to save a zombie and things just become a lot more difficult and a lot more dragged out if you round skip. And like I'm not, I've I've set up on this, and I know from experience it's just a little bit more daunting, a little bit more confusing if you want to skip to round 15. So for the sake of this tutorial, and like because of my personal preference, I enjoy um, starting from round one, getting points set up, and using all of my my afterlife abilities to the you know the most effective, efficient way of doing things. Uh, so whenever you spawn in on round one, like I've done, only I've spent the whole round explaining, you can do your first afterlife. So you can grapple this door, which allows you to get a perk. We got double points, which is very nice for this. Uh, you open this up, which is a key that allows you to do the rituals and open the pack a bunch. It's kind of like, it's literally the key to everything. So grab that, and I also turned on uh, quick revive. So we'll go back into human mode and we're ready to start the next round. Anyone else dizzy coming back from that? So we'll grab our key. You have the option to buy quick revive. I'm not going to just because I would rather have those 500 points for something else. Now, I prefer knifing all these zombies for the first three rounds just because I have, you know, the money to do everything that you need to do in this, this setup video that I'm showing you. So, let them spawn in, but I'm also going to grab this double points. And in this game, 
the uh, the Bloodhound, your starting pistol, is the most powerful starting pistol that we have seen in zombies. Uh, four shots in the chest on round two actually kill a zombie, so you don't want to kill them, you want to knife them. So I recommend three shots to the chest and then, then a knife. Alright, and this is round three. We already have $4,000 at the end of round three, which is, or, or at the beginning of round three, excuse me, uh, which is really perfect. We'll, we'll start the rituals and start this uh, setup after this round. So I will open up this gate after all the zombies spawn in just to kind of control what is happening in my game. And on round three, you can do three shots and the knife. Very nice. That's what I was trying to avoid. Yeah, you gotta be careful with the knifing on this, because if I were to grab that nuke, we'd go straight to round four, and it kind of screw up what I'm trying to show you guys. Um... The, the knife lunge is just terrible on this, but if you back away while you're knifing and the zombie's in front of you, you won't knife lunge. So you won't grab that perk immediately that falls from the zombie. So we'll get it down to the last zombie just to make things really simple for us whenever we do this ritual. Um, so we open up the first door, and you're going to want to use your beast mode character to help you do this next, or actually the first step of the opening pack-a-punch and what that is going to be is moving this crane piece uh, to drop that crate right on the floor and it's going to give us a ritual piece which I think is a lawyer's pen or something like that and that ritual piece will be used in a ritual room that is right up there okay that ritual room is opened by the door that is behind spawn that can only be done by going into beast mode and opening the door and dropping this crate so let me show you how to do that Go into beast mode and then run over here and it's kind of nice they highlighted it for you with fire so you can just zap that and that'll drop the crane then you grapple what I just did run through this room which is the ritual room and shock this which is the the key to opening this door behind spawn and that is all you need to do now you can uh, grab this pen which is the ritual piece, but uh, for the sake of this, I'm going to just grab a pistol real quick. This pistol off the wall. Uh, because there's two witches that are going to spawn every time you pick up this piece. They're going to spawn like right here, and they're going to spawn, uh, I think, somewhere around here. So just be aware of that. They're really easy to kill, but you know, you can take slaps really easily on this game. Damn it, I just killed the last zombie. Oh well. Oh well. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll save one at the end of round four then. The way that I'm doing this, you could have Jug set up and two rituals done at the end of round three, but, you know, silly things happen like that by shooting the zombie that you did not want to. Oh well. So we'll get, we'll get a few more things done this round, no big deal. And it wasn't a waste of our afterlife because we already used one, so we got a refill on that. Just make sure you save one now. So we got a max, that's nice. Thank heavens that I was getting low. Alright, we'll save that guy. He looks nice and slow. Alright, there's still another one left. 
And the reason, okay, you might be saying, oh, I don't need to save a zombie. I can do whatever you're talking about, like, mid-round. You really can't, because you get locked inside of this ritual room with a bunch of other witches that spawn in. So you kind of want to, like, do it at the end of the round, because you're locked into this room, and I'll show you what I mean here. So I just went up the staircase after, uh, behind spawn that we opened in beast mode, and we come to our first ritual room. You can place the, the fountain pen here that we picked up from the crane, and use the key that we picked up from spawn in this room. Now, just be advised that you will not be able to leave this room while the ritual is taking place, because it just, like, creates an invisible wall where the doors are at and you're locked in here with like six witches that spawn in. So that's why having this last zombie is very, very clutch. So we're going to start it up. Witches will spawn in. And it's not that difficult to do, just make sure you continue running around. Uh, and it takes about 15 to 20 seconds for this ritual to complete itself, so just wait for that to finish. And then what is going to happen is it's going to drop our first piece of four to open the pack a bunch. All right, so here is our piece. It looks like a little worm. So that is our first piece of four. All right, now we're going to run down here. And our second step is getting jug. It is really, really crucial since it's like my fourth setup video now. Um, because I keep dying, uh, trying to explain things or fucking up. Uh, but, opening this first door, you know exactly which perk is going to spawn where, just by looking at these crates. Uh, there's bottles to tell you what is behind each door. Behind this door is Speed Cola, because there's a Speed Cola bottle there. Likewise, we have a Double Tap bottle on this crate, so we know that Double Tap has spawned behind that door, and... Also, we have Jug over here. Now, we're just going to chase Jug because you... It's definitely a necessity for the setup, man. It's just... God, you take hits so fast on this game. So, what's going to happen is we're going to try to maximize as much as we can do uh, in beast mode. I'm going to take this zombie out so I can kind of have some time to explain what I'm going to do before I do it. But you want to turn into beast mode, grapple up there, turn on the perk, open this door, jump across, and get that box, which is our ritual piece. It's a toupee that you're going to use in another place. Uh, we'll get that ritual piece, and you're also going to open up this rift over here. So the rift will teleport you to the pack punch room, so that's why you want that open. And I believe you also have time to open that crate. I can do it just for the sake of this tutorial, but... I'm not sure what it does, to be honest. We'll just, uh, we'll open it just to show you how much you can get done in one beast mode. Or one afterlife ability. Um, another suggestion that I have, or another tip that I have for you guys, is to always go into the afterlife while you are, uh, facing the direction that you need to go, because in using these afterlives effectively, you need to get as much done as you can in one uh, one shot. So you don't want to get disoriented by it. It's a little disorienting whenever you turn into that that mode because your screen goes black and you know the map is new. You don't know what's what's all around you or where to go, which direction to go. So a, a little tip is that you're going to spawn facing the direction that your character is in whenever you turn into beast mode. So if I'm looking this direction, that's the way my character is going to be looking whenever I go into that ability. So let me run over here and get the zombie out of the way, and then I'll show you what I mean. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit it while I'm facing this direction because I want to grapple up there. Okay. So there's the grapple. Oh, I can't even grab it. There we go. Yeah, it's a little glitchy. All right. So I turn on jug crucial. Turn on uh, that. Jump across and get our piece. So that is our toupee that we need for the ritual. Come down here and grapple that. And we can also hit this box. And, you know, that box I hit right at the, right at the nick of time, but 
that was because I couldn't grapple immediately. You'll you'll be able to do everything if you can grapple immediately. It's just a little glitchy. They need to do some patches still. But that is the rift. Okay, I just opened that up. Uh, the rift will teleport you straight to the Pack-a-Punch room, which, you know, we're not too worried about just yet. We're going to get our pieces done because the only thing that is in that room is a nice place to train, which, you know, I'm, I encourage you to go there to train. But for, for the time being, we're, we're not going to worry about going into that room right now because witches spawn, and, and uh, right now we're going to worry about getting Jug. So at the end of round four, we're grabbing Jug, Actually, we could have grabbed it at the end of round three, but, you know, I killed the zombie like a bad kid. Um, so now we we grab Jug, and I'm going to grab this. Just be aware that two witches are going to spawn whenever you grab a piece. Okay. Killed one witch. I really don't want to kill the zombie with the witch, so hang on. There we go, witches are dead. They're really easy to kill, it's just like the, the hardest part is not killing the zombie with the witch. Um, Alright, so now we have the piece. We have Jug. And one thing to note is that in every area of the map that you open, you have these shield pieces. Uh, on this area of the map, it'll spawn right where it is now. It'll spawn, I believe, on this couch over here. And it can spawn, I think, right here, right next to the, the perk machine. So we'll grab our first piece of that, and we can do another ritual. So we'll do the ritual for over here. We'll open up this door, and this leads to the, the parking lot. Now, we need to get into this room to do the ritual, because as you can see, I think through here, there's a ritual table in there where that ghost character is spawning, he's spawning or, or where he is standing. He's standing right in front of the ritual table and we need to get into that room. So the way to do that, the way to access the ritual room just like we did the other one is to uh, go into the beast mode, the afterlife ability, whatever it is, and shock a little switch that is behind this uh, this sign. So I'll show you how to do that. And that's really the only thing that we need to do in this this, uh, this go. So I'll, I'll grapple up there. And it's really nice because the things are highlighted on where you need to go. So I grappled that and I hit this switch right here. And what that does is open up the door. So now we have access to the room that we need to go into. Okay, so I'll return to human. Alright, and we are ready to do the next ritual. Now, this is our second ritual of the game that we need to do, and please note that whenever you do these rituals, at the end of the second one, and at the end of the last one, the fourth ritual that you do, uh, Squidward is going to spawn. I call him Squidward, but it's the monster with three heads, so make sure you have a gun to kill him. Um, he won't spawn until you are finished with the ritual, but... Just be aware that that is going to happen at the end of the second one and the end of the last one. So we're going to start the ritual. Okay, all I did was place the thing down. Here we go. I gotta place the key as well. And the witches spawn in. Just remember to keep, you know, running around them. And you have room to walk. You can, uh, you can go up the staircase. You just cannot leave the room. There's like an invisible wall at the doors. You have to stay in here while the ritual is taking place. Alright, so now we have the... the piece that we need, the second piece of four that we need for the uh, Pack-a-Punch access. And like I said, that, that monster just spawned. Now, whenever he spawns uh, after the first ritual, he's pretty weak. I think it's like three bursts with this pistol to take out one head. So we'll just... I don't really want to fight him right now because I might kill this zombie in the process. So I'm going to try to make him a crawler before I actually deal with him. 
because I don't want to be fighting this monster and the round change at the same time. And I failed at making him a crawler, that's wonderful. Another grenade will kill him since his arm is blown off, so I'm gonna have to fight him uh, with the zombie still around. But a tip that I have, guys, is this this uh, monster character actually teleports to you. So if you run far enough ahead, he will teleport to you and the zombie will despawn out. So that's what we're going to do here to fight this guy and keep the round going at the same time. So we're just going to run to like the spawn area and have this monster teleport to us. Um, is he teleporting yet? You are gonna regret that real soon. He should be teleporting if we get far enough ahead of him. There he is, he teleported to us. So now we can fight him by himself. Got one more burst to put in his eye. There we go. And every time you kill a head, you have a little dragonfly that pops out. Just It's really easy to kill. Even though I'm failing. There you go. And now we will take on his, his second eye. And I just, you know, after you kill the first eye, it, uh... He, he, like, runs a little bit faster, which is great, because we want him uh, in front of the zombie. And I keep turning around, because I don't want to get cornered, but... Whenever you get familiar with the map, you'll be able to take him out a little bit quicker than what I'm doing. There you go. Killed the dragonfly, and now he is on his last eye. Trying to wait for him to open it. There we go, and he's done. And we killed his little guy there. Wonderful. And now, whenever you kill the first uh, guy, what's going to happen is you're going to have a heart here. Uh, I think it'll stay here for like 15 seconds. You're going to want to pick it up because that is one of three pieces for the wonder weapon. So now we have that piece under our belt. And all we need is two more, which I will show you how to get. But by killing him, it'll give you the first piece of the squid gun or whatever you want to call it. Alright, so, let's just reevaluate what we have. We have two rituals done. We have the monster killed. We have Jug. We, we have the first shield piece, okay? And that all happened with opening the spawn door and this first area of the map. Now, realize that I still have afterlife abilities left, so let's go take advantage of that, because we get one afterlife every time the round changes. So let's take advantage of that and open up another area of the map, that is really up to your choice. You could go the double tap route, and in this case, like I said, it's just uh, this game that double tap is right here. You can go to the waterfront district, or you can go like what I call the canals. Oh, it's, it's actually called canal district. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go to the canal way, and I'm going to show you how to effectively use this. Uh... Man, I wish I could make him a crawler and make my life a lot easier effectively use this beast mode. Okay, so we only get three beast mood modes uh, that stack up, and you only get one per round. So that's saying they're, they're a pretty hot commodity, these, these afterlife abilities, and you want to use them, you want to get as much shit done as you can in one, in one go. So what we're going to do in this one go is we're going to open up the ritual place, which is over here. We're going to open that up, uh, there's there's a door that has to be opened. We're going to turn on the perk machine that is up there. I think it's Speed Cola. And we're going to open the door that allows us to get up to that perk, which is right here. So we're going to try to do all of that um, in one go. Now, like, like I said with the last one, just a suggestion is to be looking towards the direction that you're going to run. Uh, so that you don't miss out on anything. Um, you don't want to be disoriented and lose seconds. That's what I mean by missing out on anything. You don't want to miss out on time, because as soon as we shock the last little piece that we're going to shock, I'll show you here, we're going to turn back immediately, like it's just in the nick of time that things happen. So, get the zombie over here, and I'll show you what I mean. Everything's going to happen real quick. All right, here we go. We're gonna we're gonna turn in, looking this direction, and we're gonna run. So we're gonna grapple up here immediately. Turn on our perk. 
go over and open the door that allows us to get up to that perk. And then we're going to take a shortcut. We're going to jump right off this bridge, sprint across, and we're going to grapple up here. This is the door, the last door that we need to open. You need to run quickly, jump down, go down the staircase, and there's going to be a switch right here that you hit. And that is open now. And it is it happens that quickly. Like, you need to... You have, like, maybe two seconds that you can spend, like, jumping around or, or like, being disoriented, and that is it. Like, it, it happens pretty quick. But that was our last afterlife, so getting all of that stuff done was key, because now we can do other things with our, our next afterlife that we get from next round. So now we have this open, we have the area over there open for the ritual to take place and one thing to note is that did we grab the other shield part yes we did okay just i'm getting my games confused so we grab the shield part over in that direction and there is the other shield part um it can spawn in this room i think on that wall it can spawn up here by this perk but in this scenario it is spawned right on this bridge so we will grab the second of three uh shield pieces like so and we're going to go over to the, the safest area that I, like in my opinion, is the safest area of the map uh, to do round five. And we're just going to do the next round, save the last zombie, and then use our afterlife. Alright, so we, we can open our door. And here's a buildable table, which we will build our shield later once we get the last piece. Um, I'm just I'm just debating right now if I want to buy a gun or not. Yeah, might as well. I got enough money for it, so I'm, I'm just going to get a gun here for next round, so I can do it without any problems. I'm gonna trade it in my my starting pistol. Some people might cringe, but oh well. I've I've gotten the meat wagon before and. To be honest, it's not very helpful in this in this map. So we're getting an afterlife at the beginning of this round. There it is. And this area that I'm at right now is like one of the best areas that I found to not get cornered and not get <laughs> trapped by uh, zombies that spawn out of random places that you have no idea about. Like I said, headshots are really important in this game. Helps you rank up a lot faster. Looking to finish the round off and save a zombie. Oh, did I kill the last one? Oh no, good. Clutch. Alright, so now what's going to happen is we're going to grab the piece for the ritual of the room that we opened in our last uh, afterlife. So. To do that, there is a place right below the bridge right here that you need to shock to open a crate to allow us to grab the other piece. I recommend using this afterlife uh, station, or you could use the one over there. It really doesn't matter because you're not as crunched for time on this one as you were the last one. So let's do that, and then we're going to shock that place like I just said, and there's two places over there that we will grapple. One of them is the rift, one of them is the piece. So we're going to go down right here, and jump right over the bridge, or the, the wall, shock that, which opens up our gate, open up the rift, and grapple, which will break the crate and allow us to pick up the piece. And that's really it. That's a pretty relaxed uh, beast mode place, so we can return to human. Okay, wonderful. And we'll go grab our our pieces, or our piece. Oh, I thought there was only one left. There we go. So this opens up to the pack punch room that we're not going to worry about right now. 
grab our piece, and just remember, you know, two witches do spawn. They're really easy to kill, but just don't forget about that, because they, they're, it's really easy for them to kill you as well. Alright, so now we have the piece and the ritual room open, so let's do that. Just remember, you know, you're trapped in this room, the last zombie, and you got a bunch of witches, so don't just put your piece down and stand there. You gotta run around a little bit. And you gotta be aware that the witches do fall down from the second layer like that one just did. So just watch out where they can fall down from. I've died so many times in this room, just warning you guys. Alright, should be about done. There we go. Double points. Very nice. Okay, so now we're out of afterlife, so we're gonna have to do another round. Which is fine, which is fine. We got one more ritual thing to do. Which is in the last area of the map that we have to open. So we'll do that. Let's just start the next round, get an afterlife, and finish round six. Alright, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. We got one of these, uh, dragonfly rounds, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, they can be a little annoying. I just recommend throwing grenades. The best way I've found to deal with these, these things, because it takes them out pretty quickly, even though the grenades are on the ground and they're in the air. Or, I mean, it, feel free to shoot them. You don't have to, you know, do whatever. Uh, were they killing themselves, or...? I've been shot three times in the line of duty. Takes more than a scratch to bother me. Okay, is that... I'm just trying to save the last one on this. It can be a little annoying if you're saving the last dragonfly, but... I'm going to, and I'm going to show you another thing that we can do with this afterlife that we just got. Okay, so we're going to open up our last area of the map, which is the Waterfront District. And this beast mode that we're going to do, there's a lot of steps that can be done in one of them. One is grappling up there, turning on the perk machine, opening this door that allows you to get up there. Um, and also, coming down here and grappling up to that hook to knock down uh, that crate and opening up the rift in this area at the same time. So, we will try that. And remember, just face the direction that you want to want to spawn in as. Alright, so we'll grapple immediately. Shock. I don't know, I don't know if it's called grappling. I don't know, you're, you're pulling yourself up. Alright, pull yourself up up here. Knock the thing down, and then open up up the rift and this this is the last piece to the ritual okay now I recommend grabbing the last uh, piece to the shield which is in this room somewhere you just kind of got to walk around the edges and look for it might be over here it usually is over here yep okay so there's the last piece for the shield and that's all we can do right now, because we don't have another afterlife. If we did have another afterlife, we could do the ritual. Uh, we'll pick up the ritual piece. And just be advised that two witches will spawn. Okay. And now, I'm just going to build the shield right now, because it's... Uh, really important to to have on this game mode because black ops 3 zombies it, they're really difficult it's it you know i mean i don't know if you want to say difficult they're just different from the zombies that we've played 
but they hit you so much faster than any other zombies that we've we've played. And the problem is, is that once they start hitting you, they hit you so fast that you cannot sprint away because right when you hit sprint, um, they hit you again and you stop sprinting, and then you sprint and they hit you again and you stop sprinting, and it's just like this no-win situation where if you start getting hit, uh, you're downed. So. That's the the nice thing about the shield is that you do not slow down whenever it gets hit. If you confess, only through acceptance can the mark be so we'll get another afterlife on this and we'll finish our last ritual. At the at the end of this round. One thing that's nice about this game mode is, uh, or this this game, I guess I can say, is that there's no headless zombies. As soon as you get a headshot, they fall down, which is really nice. Black Ops 1 and 2, you'd, you'd shoot a zombie and then I'd, I'd get downed by headless zombies all the time. That's so frustrating. Like, especially with that Mark II, you'd kill a or you, you know, 50 plus, 60 plus, you'd shoot zombies and they'd just run around with their heads shot off for like, I don't know, 5-10 seconds. It's really easy to get down by them as well if you're not in a good place to be. Oh, there we go. Nice level 28. Alright, we got two zombies left. I'm gonna keep them. Alright, so let's do our last ritual piece and get this pack punch machine opened. And like I said before, uh, that monster spawns at the end of the second ritual and the end of the last ritual, so just be advised whenever you're doing this, this last ritual piece, uh, you're gonna have to fight that, that big monster, so... Let's uh, let's go do that. Let's see, did I open up the rift? I don't remember. No, I didn't. I'm gonna open up this rift, which is just a teleporter to the pack a punch room. Okay, opened up that door. And what we need to do is open up this gym. This gym is the last ritual table. Okay, it's right there, and it is called. You come down here and you hit it right here with your, your afterlife ability. I'm going to kill this zombie, by the way. Very nice. Okay. That'll help us kill that monster. Alright, so it's called the Anvil. We're going to open that in our beast mode ability. Alright, and that's really the only thing we have to do since we, we use the, uh, the other beast mode that... Uh, we did when we first opened the door, but if you wanted to do more, you could like grapple yourself up here and You could probably oh, the door would have to be opened. I don't know there, If you open the door you could turn on the perk machine There's other things that you can do in this this mode, but we don't need to worry about it You could like turn back immediately after you open that door. We don't need to worry about it because we already did everything so That's really nice So we got the last zombie of the round we're starting our last ritual Set the key down, okay? And just remember, you know, there's a bunch of witches in here, so don't stand still and watch it as good as the graphics are. And as you can see, like, I'm having to do a couple cutbacks in here because as the zombie, like, if you do these on the early rounds, you know, the zombie's not running as fast. It's kind of at the same speed as the uh, the witches. But you start getting these later rounds, the witches go really slow and the, the zombie, like, it's fast as hell. Alright, so... We'll kill this guy. There we go. Got a dragonfly coming over? Not going down without a fight, huh? 
I don't even see him. Where's he at? Oh, there he is. All right, you want to you want to really keep your distance from this guy because he can insta red screen you with a super slam that he does. It's kind of like a robot foot slam that uh, knocks the zombies over as well. So I'm just going to give him his space that he wants and uh, fight him here. Okay. Alright, where are these things going? Well, I'm trying to shoot the dragonflies. I'm failing epically. Like, you know, just, just take as much room as you need. Like, you have the last arm. You don't need to worry about, you know, going somewhere and having zombies spawn behind you. That's also is what is really nice about, uh, you know, doing these things at the end of the round. Don't have to worry about that guy coming in with a full horde of zombies. Alright, so we finished that. And now what we have is the availability to unlock the Pack-A-Punch machine. And you do that by going into this room uh, through the rift. And be advised, whenever you go through this, there's going to be some witches that spawn. So don't just stand here in awe looking at the graphics and, like... <laughs> Speaking from experience, I've done it too many times. But, you know, kill the witches, and then you're good to go to unlock this Pack-A-Punch. Now, the Pack-A-Punch is that wall over there, or it's behind that wall. And by collecting these worms or doing the rituals, you unlock these symbols, which you see here. So now all of them are lit up because we have done all the rituals, and now it should open for us. Alright, that was pretty amazing. So now it's open, alright. We have the last table here that we're going to use whenever we finish placing the worms. And these worms go into these pedestals, okay? So there's one. And then it opens up, whenever we place that, it opens up a wall that we can actually wall run on. Alright, so now we'll place the second one. Open up the other wall running wall. Now make sure whenever you wall run, um, jump. <laughs> I did it once where I didn't know what I did wrong, and I, I fell right off the map. And you want to jump. Like, this is very, very crucial, because even if you have Quick Revive, it is an immediate game over if you fall down. So make sure you jump whenever you're wall running, because I made the mistake. Don't, don't do what I did. I was like, how did I die? Did I glitch out? I didn't know. And I, I went back and watched it, and I didn't jump whenever I hit that, so... Make, just make sure whenever you wall run, you jump, otherwise it's immediate game over. So now what we're going to do is we have, oh, I guess I could place the, the other two uh, worms in. Alright, and those two pedestals are right up here, and it'll complete a little bridge. So are these worms going to fix everything? Alright. So now we have a lot of energy going into this this little, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, <laughs> coin. <laughs> and what's going to happen is we're going to start this ritual and it's going to break it open and that's where we're going to be pack-a-punching. So just remember that with everything that we do, we have witches that spawn out, but this one's going to be a little more intense. We're going to have some really dramatic music. Um, it's going to be some wild shit happening, so just prepare yourself. Alright, I didn't want to really talk right there. I don't know what this does. I've killed him a couple times. I don't really know what happens when you kill him. I haven't gotten that far. Okay, so whenever you kill him, he turns into like some... ...random guy. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, I didn't want to talk during that epicness of the music and everything, but pretty much what happened is it cracked open that... ...that beacon up there, that coin. 
Um, oh yeah, I forgot to say that guy's gonna spawn whenever you finish this. Um, oh yeah, cracked open the coin. That's where you're gonna pack a punch. You just throw it in, and like this tentacle arm, like takes your gun and pack a punches it. So we will, we will do that to kill this guy. <laughs> And one thing that's really nice about this Pack-A-Punch is that you can Pack-A-Punch your guns, uh, ex excluding the ray gun. You can't Pack-A-Punch the ray gun twice, and I think the rocket launcher you can't Pack-A-Punch twice. But you can Pack-A-Punch like bullet weapons twice, and whenever you Pack-A-Punch it the second time, it'll give you an effect. And, you know, those effects could be like a, like a shock wave that is kind of like the Wonder Waffle that electrocutes the zombies whenever you shoot them, or a Thunder Gun effect that I think, it, I'm not sure what it's called exactly, but it blows the zombies away on certain, some bullets, like, it has to recharge, I believe, but what'll happen is you'll, you'll shoot it and, like, this Thunder Gun effect will blow zombies away, and there's a burn furnace that, like, turns them all on fire and it kills them. Um, there's also a turned ability that makes, like, some zombies that you shoot turn into your teammate and it goes and kills other zombies. So there's a bunch of different abilities, like, whatever, whatever your biggest preference is on that, you can get that. Um, and I'm gonna have this guy teleport over here before I pack a punch. He'll just teleport over, and what we'll do is we'll pack a punch our our gun and kill this big guy and that is it for the the pack punch now what we're gonna do is try to get um, the wonder weapon which I already told you guys that we got the first piece of the wonder weapon uh, from the first fucking Squidward guy that we killed so we already got one piece. The second piece is from these these seeds that I mentioned like right at the beginning. These these uh, seeds that you can pop open, and we can't. Did I pick up the fumigator? No. Okay, so there's this tool that you can find in many areas of the map uh, that'll pop open these seeds, and what they do is they like develop over the course of the game. They start out green and then they'll mature to a red stage, and then they'll mature to a purple stage, and that's when you want to harvest these seeds with this fumigator tool that I'm going to show you. Um, and by harvesting that, it will give you, you know, power-ups, uh, guns. It gave me a ray gun once, it's given me max ammos, uh, but it'll also give you the piece to the wonder weapon, so that's what we'll use. And... The last piece, that's the second to last piece, is from those seeds. The last piece comes from the, the what we're used to as dog waves. Um, the little dragonflies, or what even comes into as meatballs, they come into this as well on, you know, every four or five rounds. But what we'll do is we'll, we'll get another drop, and it looks really green and like a, like a lime green color drop. So we'll pick that up. Just make sure that you pick it up immediately because, you know, it only stays there for... I think like 15 seconds and then it disappears and you have to wait until another dog round. So we'll grab that and that will be all three pieces to get this this wonder weapon. So we have a pack a punch gun. Pretty much now what we're going to do is wait for the the dog round and I'll show you how to get the fumigator. Let's kill this guy first. Okay. And I also must say that this this place in here is probably the best place in the map that I found to run. Like it's kind of open. You can run without getting stuck by this big guy. Um I mean you can take this the Squidward guy down pretty easily and not get trapped by the zombies. That's the big problem, is that in everywhere else on the map, this guy he spawns in like every two to three rounds and you know, he just messes you up because, like, and, and that's another thing, I had to turn the vibration off because he constantly vibrates, it's like Brutus, um, but he constantly comes, and he's just such a, such a nuisance, but, uh, running in here allows you to deal with him with the, the concentration that's required, so, let's, uh, let's go pick up a fumigator and see if there's any purple it's only round seven, so I don't know if they've had enough time to mature to the purple stage yet. But we oh I just tell <laughs> whoops, I teleported right back. 
All right, so the fumigator, like, it, it spawns in the spawn room. It also is, like, spawned by the stamina up machine. Spawns on this chair. That's one place for it right now. And you'll see it, like, all over the map. You'll see a bunch of them. You won't be able to pick any of them up. But they're just there because, like, whenever you play co-op, you know, everybody can have this uh, fumigator tool to harvest pods. Okay, so if we go and look at these pods, these are the pods that I'm talking about. It says hold square to harvest this pod, but it's green. That means it's not ripe yet or not ready to be harvested. If you harvest it, it'll throw like a grenade or a zombie out. Like, you can try it if you'd like. Um, and when it's red, you know, it'll give you more options of things that can spawn, but can still spawn like a zombie or throw out some random stuff, or I've even seen it throw out nothing. But whenever it turns purple, it'll be like glowing and there'll be like light all around it and you'll be like, whoa. Um, that's when you can harvest it and have the chance to get the last piece for the, the wonder weapon. And, okay, so this one's red. So you see how this one's glowing red. Um, very very cool, like tempting to open to see what's in there. They can drop uh, perks and stuff too, but you know, we're gonna wait for the them to turn purple, which I don't think any of them are. Yeah, they're just green and red. So we'll go through a couple rounds in the rift because it's a very nice place to run. Uh, we'll go through a couple rounds there and come back a little bit later to see if they're ready to harvest. Also, this is a time that you can, you know, grab perks, do whatever. I'm going to grab a quick revive just in case, like, if I go down, I continue this, uh, this tutorial. Now, also, I'm going to look in the sky, and you're going to be, like, gasming here, because I was the first time. Um, after you do the pack-a-punch, it's kind of like a little Easter egg or something, but there's a giant squid in the sky, like an apocalypse-type thing. I don't know what that is you can't really kill it by shooting it but yeah that happens that's crazy okay I, like i've seen it you know 50 times already and it still blows my mind wow okay so god i got all distracted so you can get, grab uh stamina up but it has to be powered up first and i don't have afterlife to do that so i'll just grab Let's see, quick revive, and we'll go down to the rift to, to do a couple rounds to wait for these pods to, to be able to be harvested. Now, at this moment in time, we can only go down to the rift by using a teleporter, but we can also get there through that door, but, you know, you have to be down there in beast mode and hit a switch to open that door, which we will do that whenever we get another uh, beast mode of, uh, ability, like from killing this round. So I'm just going to use the rift over here and, and do another round. And we'll try to get this. Oh, actually, I can hit the box as well. This, this is a very, very good gun, but I recommend it in co-op. This, uh, this rocket launcher, when it's pack-a-punched, like, one shot from it'll kill a full horde in the 30s. <laughs> Crazy. The guns on this are really, really overpowered. Everything kills. There's not really a bad gun that doesn't kill zombies. Like, you know, granted, up until a certain point, oh, that's, a, that's a sniper, I don't really want it. The snipers are super, super powerful whenever you pack-a-punch them, but... I don't recommend them on this map unless you're playing like co-op because, you know, you gotta stop and aim down sight and there's just, ain't nobody got time for that. Oh, and give me the rocket launcher again. I'm just gonna keep this feral. Alright, so now we'll do a few rounds. And this is the Widow's Wine Machine. It's the new the new perk on this uh, on this game. What it does is it's kind of like the contradiction to the way this game is set up. You know, I, I mentioned earlier like this game's really hard because the zombie slaps you, and then as soon as you start 
like sprinting, he slaps you again because they slap you so fast. Well, that is kind of like the contradiction to that because whenever they slap you, they freeze, like they get spider webs all around them and they stop moving. So if a zombie slaps you, he's never going to slap you again for a little while. Like, yeah, it's kind of annoying because they they stop moving for a while and they can mess up your trains, but, you know, you could go down as well, so... It's... I, I almost see it almost as a necessity. Uh, there is a way to avoid zombies from hitting you, and that is by doing the, the slide in zombies, like the little... the new slide of zombies, but, uh... Just... I've gone down from doing it because you'll slide and then you go to sprint, but you cannot sprint because a zombie slaps you. And you've got to remember you're still crouched, okay? You're crouched and then you get slapped and you're just instantly down. So if you're going through, like, if you're threading the needle is what I like to call it, where you're going into two zombies that are coming the wrong direction, go ahead and uh, slide, but be very, very careful about sliding next to a full horde. Because, uh, it would be super, super easy for them to down you. Just just by getting hit once, and you stop sprinting, or, or not able to stand up. So, just fair warning. Alright. I'm gonna do another round down here, actually. Hopefully we'll get, uh... Hey, what can I tell you? I get shit done. Um, what are you... Those rounds, those those dog rounds, the new dog rounds to come. How do they make so nice, okay, so we should get a piece from this now. Oh yeah, the neat meatballs. I mean, I don't really know what the purpose of these meatballs are. They don't really... They just, like, cause a little explosion damage to you. Like, it would be really annoying whenever you have a red screen, but they don't really do too much damage to you. Alright, so they didn't drop the piece that we need. But that's alright. They'll spawn in the rounds with the zombies as well, so you can also get the, uh the piece to the wonder weapon with that. Alright, so at the end of this round I'll save one and go see if those uh, seeds are ready to be harvested. Round 10, I think they almost should be by now. No, another max. All right. Thank heavens for that. I was getting low. Spawning is just super slow down here. Alright, now we can do a few things. We're going to go hunting for these seed pods. Let's see, there's one in here. That one's just red. Alright, and also what we can do is open up the gate to stamina. up. So we can down ourselves right here, go into the afterlife, turn on Widow's Wine. There's Mule Kick up there. We'll open a door and we'll also turn on stamina up. So let's do that. So we'll turn on Widow's Wine. Go upstairs, turn on Mule Kick. And at the same time, we will open this door that I was talking about earlier, and you have access to turn on stamina up.
Stamina Up and Widow's Wine, I, I definitely recommend. Yeah, I don't really, that has to do something with the Easter Egg or maybe the Elemental Knives, I'm not sure. Or the Elemental Swords, excuse me. I, to be honest, I don't know what it does. But I opened it anyhow. So we can grab this. It's 4,000. Kind of a little pricey. But in my opinion, almost a necessity. Alright, and we'll also grab uh, some stamina up. And you just see that liquid divinium thing pop up in my screen. And what that is, you might be like, what is that? Because I asked the same question when I first saw it. Well, what it is, is whenever you spend a lot of money, you know, opening doors, buying guns, buying perks, whatever it may be, uh, you get these these liquid divinium things. And it, what it is, is it's like a, a, slot machine, a slot machine chance to roll um, to get to the... Uh, what is it called? Dr. Dr. Mavoric? Or, I'm not really sure what it's called. Dr. something. I think it starts with an M. I don't even know. But it's an option in the, the options menu of the zombies that will allow you to get different, like, special kind of... Uh, I think it's called gobble gum. I just call it bubble gum. But the gumballs. It'll give you different gumballs that, like, do special things. Um... Like, there, there's the ordinary gumballs that are, like, in plain sight that allows you to, like, vanish. It's like zombie blood, and there's teleports you, and stock option, and, like, a bunch of different, like, ordinary kind of gumballs. But the other ones are, like, you know, you hit it, and it revives all players on the map. Or you hit it, and, you know, you... Oh, what is some other options? Like, you, whenever you revive, you get to keep all your perks and your guns, like some really, really awesome things. So by just buying stuff around the map, you are, you know, kind of rewarding yourself a little bit in, in the sense that you have more options to get good gumballs in the machine. And these gumball machines, you know, they're just kind of like the box. They go around the map. Whenever you hit it so much, it'll, it'll move. Um, and, you know, the gumballs are just kind of like perks that you drink, but they're like mini perks, you know, like... The one is you, it's like flak jacket. It only lasts for three rounds, but you don't take explosive damage or flak jacket. Excuse me, listen to me, I'm saying flak jacket. Uh, PhD, it's like PhD, you don't take explosion damage, but it only lasts for three rounds. So you can buy that, um, and you get to set what gumballs go into your machine. Um, I think you can select five that you can select in the options menu, and it will it will only have those five options in the in the machine whenever you hit it. And right, this is a really good gun. Alright, I was trying to look for some purple pots, but I don't think they're ready yet. I mean, I probably look like a scrub. Maybe they don't, like, spawn in until, like, round 15 or something, but we'll see. We'll go do another round in the rift. Alright, no zombies should teleport in here. There we go. Well, that's good. Oh, and what I'll do is next round I'll also pack a punch this gun again to show you the, the different effects that I was talking about whenever you pack a punch. Alright, so unfortunately Squidward's coming this round. Kind of a nuisance. Alright, so you see whenever I got hit, like, uh... -huh. Like some spider webs kind of came out of my screen, and that's what happens whenever you get hit. Like it'll spray that out, and it'll stop whatever zombie. See how he's moving real slow? Um, that's what Widow Wine does. It it stops the zombies from hitting you a second time, which is just perfect for the way that this game is played. And you also get like a little tactical grenade. I'll show you what that does. 
uh, it just kind of like stuns all the zombies. So I can see that being very useful in maybe the situation right now where you want to kill the Squidward and not have to deal with all these zombies. Or um, like if a player goes down and you throw this little tactical and like have time to revive your players because what it does is it slows the zombies down. So it'll go off and it just like shoots you know <laughs> spider webs all over them now in the early rounds you see it make some crawlers and it'll actually kill them Ooh, and can i grab that no i can't okay i don't want to kill myself trying to grab it but you saw there there was like a little drop that happened and what that drop is is it's a refill on the tactical grenades so whenever you kill zombies with this uh widow's wine perk it'll it'll drop those things that here i'll throw another one it'll drop those little things that allow you to refill uh your tactical spider web grenades or whatever you want to call them you are a stubborn son of a bitch i'll give you that all right so i guess i'll kill some zombies i've just been running around talking Actually, I'll grab that nuke. Maybe. There we go. Oh, and that's what I'm talking about. So you grab that, that little piece that I just grabbed. It, it'll, it lasts real, there's, it's really short, guys. It'll only stay there for like 10 seconds, but you grab it and it'll give you another grenade. Okay. I recommend for this uh, Squidward guy using the Haymaker Pack-a-Punched. The Haymaker Pack-a-Punched is like almost a wonder weapon in and of itself. It's really overpowered. comes with like 175 rounds and two shots from it. It's a shotgun. Uh, two shots kills a head, so you can down it pretty quickly. There we go. Alright, so now you can see over here that it's all glowing purple. That's what I was talking about. That pod is now ready. So maybe you have to wait until round 12 to, uh, to harvest them. I'm not really sure, but it is now ready. Like It has the chance to spawn in the piece for the uh, wonder weapon. So we'll try going around this round and uh, harvesting those pods. Nice. Yeah. Alright, very nice. And you want to be careful on insta-kill when you're trying to save a zombie because if he hits you, he'll, he'll get like cobwebs all around him from that widow's wine and he'll kill himself. Just like that. <laughs> now there we go, more grenades. Oh, maybe I didn't even get a grenade that time. I don't know. Maybe it'll. You can only have a maximum of one. I'm not sure. All right, so we're gonna harvest that, and I'm not sure what it gave us. Oh, okay, okay, so that gave us fuel for our our rocket shield, which is this thing. If you, instead of setting it down, it allows you to boost. So, <laughs> it's kind of silly. Alright, but let's go around the map and look for more pods. And another thing to note is that the teleporters are not random. Uh, each teleporter uh, teleports to a specific place every time, so that one always comes to the canals. Okay, here's a thousand bucks. That one's red, so it's not ready. But this is kind of similar to Origins, what we saw with the dig sites, you know, but, uh, you know, just a little bit of, uh, a, little bit of a twist to it. 
Okay, just hunting for these seed pods to try to get our piece. No, there's a seed pot over here. It's still green. There's also one up here. That one's green. And also, guys, there are uh, there are fuses that I have neglected to pick up. Here's a fuse, and there's a fuse in every area of the map that has a, a perk, like a, a a perk, like a drinkable perk. Um, was that red? Yeah, that was red. Um, and what those fuses do, you can put those into a master switch in the uh, in the pack punch area, and it'll allow you to. Oh wow, some frame lag. Uh, it'll allow you to hit, where's it at? Right there, that civil protector. And what happens is, is this robot cop comes in um, and just like starts killing zombies with you. It's kind of funny. Alright, I didn't look up here for the purple pod. Oh, that one's green. I don't think there's one up there. Okay, we'll go to the last area of the map. Just continuing looking for these purple pods. That one's red. And there will be a should be a fuse around here somewhere. I know it can spawn a few. Oh. It can spawn a few different places. I'm just trying to look. I know, like, if you see a box of cigarettes, like, right there, that's where the fuse can spawn. But it's also glowing blue. There we go. So now we have two of three. We'll get the last one from the other place, but, uh... You know, that'll allow us to call in that civil protector. Alright, that one's still red. So yeah, we don't really have many, like, pods that are ready to be harvested, but it's worth a shot just looking around. Okay, so let me go get that last fuse and I'll show you guys how to put that in. Uh, did we get it from that area? Yeah, we did. So now the last piece will be in the canals, which is behind a door that I have not opened up yet. So next to every, like around every drink that you can grab is a fuse. Okay, so here's this one. Sometimes it spawns over here, or seen it over here before. So now we have all three of them, so let's go build that real quick. Alright, this fuse box is... Looking around, oh here it is. Like glowing green. Or no, it's from that light. Okay, here we go. I think I heard something starting up. So now the master switch is powered up, and you have the availability, if we go back, run back there real quick, uh, to fire up these civil protector switches. And there's actually a trophy that you can get, or an achievement, I guess, if you're playing Xbox, uh, that you can get if you fire up a, or call in, here it is, a civil protector. It says hold square to summon civil protector. You can, if you summon one in from every district or every area of the map, you get a trophy. <laughs> Excuse me, um, but uh, I'm not going to do that because I would kill the last zombie and it'd be here for a long time. And I'm just taking it slow and getting everything set up. So let's uh, let's survive another round and try to get some of uh, those last two pieces for the wonder weapon. And 
I suggest running the way I'm running. I've run it uh, counterclockwise and clockwise, and what I'm doing right now seems to be the best because that window that I'm looking at right now is the worst. Uh, it can spawn in like five, six zombies at a time, and they'll just completely like not give you an option to get through. So if you're running this way, you can always look at that window, uh, you know, and make the judgment call if you need to do a cutback or you know change the way that you're running. Otherwise, like, sometimes I round this corner, like, going the other way, and just get raped because there's no way to, there's no option to run. God, I love the headshot sound. to drop a piece. I'm just really paranoid about it dropping a piece because I've missed it before. Those those meatballs that come or those dragonflies that come, uh, they can drop the the you know the neon green piece that you need. I'm not sure what it's called. We'll find out what the actual name is, but just really want to make sure you don't miss it. Because it's, it's a hot commodity, you know, you can't really get it <laughs> very easily. It only comes around a little bit. Alright, we got a crawler left. I'll kill these guys. Let's go uh, seed hunting again and see if we can get that to pop off. Okay, go up the stairs, look for some pods. That one we already harvested. That one's red. There we go, there's a purple one. Okay, so we'll harvest that. And that gave us the Man of War, which is a really, really powerful uh, assault rifle. Shit, I'll grab it, I'll show you guys. Um... Kinda sounds like the STG, to be honest. Alright, here's another purple one. Very nice. And we're looking for a tentacle to pop up. Oh, there it is. Okay. So this is actually a piece to the wonder weapon. It's called the Margwa Tentacle. Okay. Margwa. Fucking Squidward's arm. <laughs> Alright, so that's uh, the second to last piece. What we need now is the piece that comes from the dog rounds. So, we'll see if we can get it. We should have a dog around now, I believe. Maybe not. No, I guess not. Oh, yes we do. <laughs> Alright. You know what, I bet you could kill him immediately as soon as he spawns if you had uh, that shotgun. Because he has all of his eyes open at the beginning. I might try that next time. Oh shit. I'm trying to kill the, the meatballs and not let them die from me because I want to drop that. Come on now. I wanted to drop that piece. Run over here. Alright, hopefully it'll fall here. Alright, is that the last one? Oh, I guess it is. I'm gonna go pack a bunch real quick and kill this guy before we start the next round. Alright, 
so we'll pack a punch the man of war you are a stubborn son of a bitch. and yeah we'll go ahead and we'll get a little uh upgrade like on top of the the upgrade Punch this one. This is your last chance. Give up quietly. All right. Trying to make sure that guy stays. Don't make me get tough on you, big guy. All right, I'll give another attachment to it, or one of those uh, special upgrades. Oh, I couldn't grab it. Shit. I probably lost it. There we go, I got it. Yeah, those things are really annoying, those dragonflies. That's alright. There we go. So see, I, on this gun I have the... called the Thunder Wall attachment. It's kind of like the Thunder Gun. It just blows them away. I'll show you what it looks like here sh shortly. So like in the first couple bullets of the clip, it'll like blow zombies away, literally. Alright, here we go. There. That's what happens. <laughs> Just blows them up. This is really cool. And if it was a fire, I think the blast furnace is really cool. It actually sets all of them on fire. Ooh, what is that? Oh, nice. Alright, got another round to do. Yeah, now all we're doing, guys, is waiting for the meatball or the dragonfly to drop the last piece to this wonder weapon. So yeah, if you kill a zombie that's infected by Widow's Wine, um, it'll give you that little drop, or it has a chance of dropping the, uh, the thing that refills your tacticals. the round with this nuke and now we should have those uh, either this round or next round should be the you know the, the meatballs Okay, 
is, it'll be next round. Oh, we, where's he spawning? There we go. One head's already gone. That's wonderful. Yet yeah, now, now he'll actually keep up with the zombies. I mean, yeah, he does run a little faster, but you don't need to worry about him falling behind. He's right there with all the zombies, and you can take him out pretty easily. Just trying to hoard up all the zombies so I can uh, shoot behind me on this guy. Damn, he opens his eye at the wrong time. just got disconnected from the servers. Alright, well I'm gonna I'm still gonna upload that to YouTube guys. Uh, but pretty much what happens is you just get the last piece from the meatballs or the um what is it called? The the dragonflies and what'll happen is you will grab that piece just like I did with the heart and just like I did with the uh, tentacle arm you'll just pick it up just like a drop and or by holding square and you'll build it at a buildable table and then that is the wonder weapon you can pick it up so i will upload that to youtube unfortunately you know servers disconnected it's just being completely overwhelmed by a bunch of players but thank you guys for watching